Hi everybody, I just want to do a weekly review of what's been going on uh, for the stock market here. Um, you can see that we have quite a number of uh, downward players this past week, but particularly of interest is Apple and TSM. And I would say Apple is the leader of the market, and yet they are really struggling here this past week, about 8% loss of the stock value. So you can see here, uh, starting with Friday, Friday was a pretty bad day. Um, you can see also... Uh, Thursday was pretty bad in here. Um, Wednesday was actually a pretty good day. Um, and then Tuesday was pretty bad. Uh, and then Monday was kind of a mixed day. So we started off the week um, relatively mixed um, and then kind of dropped here on Tuesday. So Tuesday was kind of the big, big day, I would say, um, down uh, for the week to think about um, the rest and how it affected the rest of the week. So you can see here that uh, Monday was a pretty uh, even day for the most part, um, maybe a little bit uh, down uh, here at the end of the day and then up at night. So you can see uh, overnight things kind of looked good and then things just got really bad here on Tuesday. Um, so and when you compare the, the, the good versus bad, you saw pretty much a better day on Wednesday. So Wednesday kind of trimmed up all the losses most of it evened it out at least with um, what happened on Tuesday um, and then you could see that by Wednesday Thursday here you know everything started to drop again so that really was the big another big change in the market uh, on Wednesday on Thursday so we can see here that the average has basically been increasing in the market um, and maybe decreasing this past week or so um, but you can see overall it's been increasing um, since about 8 of uh, 2022. So, so the volume overall has been increasing uh, past couple of days, um, but it was kind of decreasing, uh, at least uh, relatively speaking. You can see kind of compared back to here. So starting on the 26th, you can see we were kind of at a midpoint in the volume level. We did kind of drop uh, volume end of the 28th, and then we went up. On the 29th, um, kind of hit a little higher volume area, and then dropped on the 30th, and then basically went way up right at the end of the day. And when you look at that, that was negative volume right here. Um, you can see that it takes us back to basically 9 of 14. Uh, when we saw this one negative volume spike uh, right in here, um, that doesn't include overnight time period at all, but um, it just gives us some idea of relative uh, volume. And in terms of money flow, we see that the money kind of goes in two phases here. We saw this big downward trend here, and then we saw kind of a halt in the volume and price and, and the general money flow. So you see basically what happened here at the start of September, uh, money was kind of flowing into the market, um, and then money suddenly flew out of the market um, at a very fast rate, uh, starting on the 13th here. And you can see 13th dropping all the way to the 16th. Then some money kind of went back into the market, and then, but this didn't really make a positive level. It only made a slightly positive level. So when you say money coming back in the market, it just wasn't leaving the market as fast. Um, when it's below zero here, it still is potentially leaving the market. So, um, but you can see that there's just acceleration of money leaving the market here. You can see more and more money leaving the market. At the end of the day here, it didn't look so good. Uh, you can see we're kind of dropping here on uh, uh, money flow. So when you look at it in detail, there's really only one good day this past week, which was Wednesday. Um, and almost all that was lost the following day. And I think a lot of people just didn't realize, didn't take the truth that it was basically equal, and if not even a little bit worse, uh, on Thursday. I think one of the reasons people didn't take it so seriously on Thursday was that a lot of that move happened overnight, about half of the move. Um, and then you can see right here at 3 o'clock in the morning, there's just a big drop um, in price. So what should we expect for next week? Um, so essentially, when you look at the ATR here, um, we're basically keep going up and we even kind of went up today a little bit. So I would say next week we could hit some pretty major swings in the market, about nine points on the SPY. So what does that correspond to in terms of percentage? So if you measure percentage and you hit right in the middle of the SPY right here, and then you go up about nine points, say um, we're talking about two point, we're talking about two point five percent moves next week being pretty common. 
Um, and that could be up or down. So I, I see this kind of going up 2.5%, maybe down 2.5%, and kind of um, fluctuating quite wildly um, next week. And we can see here that the volume has kind of been accelerating a little bit um, into this week. So if we are to take this properly for next week, we could see you know quite a number of days at 123 million shares traded for the SPY. Um, so in terms of percentage wise, um, you know, we're talking basically up 15% uh, or so in the, uh, in the number of uh, shares traded. So pretty much any way you look at it, next week is probably going to be a busier week. It looks like we're kind of increasing on volume, we're increasing on the ATR, um, just a number of pretty important increases that we see. So here you can see that the volume is increasing. It did kind of decrease a little bit maybe today, but um, you can say, uh, you know, we're on track to see um, you know, another 9 million uh, or so plus from the uh, volume range that we see here. It's even possible that we see some spikes. So you can see back here uh, in April and June, we saw a couple spikes um, hitting quite large uh uh, changes in the volume so we could get some spikes next week who knows um, even way up into this range um, but that would be a major change um, I doubt we'll see anything like we see back here in uh, the first month of the year so again to repeat myself uh, you know what I'm suggesting here is that we're gonna see basically you know next week we can see 2.5 percent moves quite common um, and then we're also seeing about a 15% increase in the volume next week as well, um, with the ATR also increasing. Uh, so the really sad news is that we might not see any positive sign next week until about the 10th or the 7th. And that's pretty much the whole week. Um, we could see a down week again, but just slightly. So even if we see like a 5% move upwards, uh, it's still pretty much could say that it's going to be a down week, um, you know, just despite what has already happened, a lot of people are going to say, well, all right, it's only up 5% um, for the week or something like that. So the other alternative is a 5% down move. Um, so the, and that's looking pretty possible too. So, or maybe splitting the difference. So another way to look at this is that, you know, for next week, we basically have, when we see a bounce like this on the MACD, that means that we're seeing a level of support and suggesting that this level right here could stay uh, for a while. Um, so if we saw a quick turnaround here, like we saw here, um, this shows that there's not necessarily support. It's actually kind of um, becoming a, a level that's not agreed on. So we do see since this, we already had a bounce once, um, there's a potential even for another bounce and a third bounce and so on, um, right at this low level. So doing a quick volume study on the cleaner volume oscillator, you can kind of see that these trend lines, both of these kind of converge lower here on the lower side. So it looks like we might see some more negative volume uh, into next week, and we still might see positive volume. You see there's some room for positive volume, but definitely could see some new lows uh, on some uh, volume side. So when you look at the overall stock market for what happened this past week, uh, you can see Apple pretty much uh, leading the way here for a major downtrend, 8% uh, loss. I can see a Ambiv, uh, you can see they also had a major drop here. Uh, we can see on the chart there, they really dropped pretty hard. Um, and then you can see Philip Morris dropping pretty hard, Procter Gamble dropping. Uh, and then Nike actually having a pretty bad uh, Friday here as well. Um, and then uh, you can see Comcast Corporation also doing not so good this past week, down 8%. Um, so to be at zero level, you're basically up in here. So on the other side of the coin, um, you can see Eli Lilly basically doing having a pretty good week at a positive 4%. Um, and then you can see up in here ConocoPhillips, uh, Occidental Petroleum, uh, the Home Depot doing pretty good, Netflix and Twitter doing pretty good. Um, so there was a couple good side of things uh, this past week as well. Now here's a graph showing just the whole entire market, not just the S&P 500. You see technology sector here, um, you can see in general it wasn't as bad as it looked on the other chart, but there's quite a number of companies that did pretty well. Um, and you see communications, 
uh, consumer cyclical, financials, healthcare, uh, actually doing pretty good on healthcare side, energy doing pretty good as well, uh, and consumer defensive. Utilities having a pretty tough week, industrials, base materials, and then real estate. So you can see here pretty much everybody in the technology sector having a bad week. You can see the zero line being up here. Um, and basically Apple doing terrible this past week. Uh, Qualcomm also having a lot of troubles. You know, just pretty much all the all the bigger companies, uh, Broadcom, NVIDIA, doing okay, but still a 3% loss is a pretty significant loss in the week. And in healthcare, you can see um, pretty much uh, Ambiv having the worst week here. Uh, in the sector, um, Lily doing pretty good uh, in general overall, 4%, so not too bad. Energy actually looking pretty good here. Um, you can see Marathon Petroleum Corporation, uh, Phillips 66, uh, Valero doing okay. 6% uh, for the week is pretty, pretty freaking good. And then just kind of review the overall industry, the companies over $2 billion in market cap. You can kind of see the graphs here. Uh, so specific tickers maybe that might be interested in uh, Microsoft here looking like it's pretty low. Uh, United Healthcare Group looking pretty low as well. Um, Exxon Mobil looking low. Um, Procter and Gamble looking pretty low as well. Um, and Chevron and so on. Home Depot just everyone's pretty low right now. So, uh, but here's kind of the list so you can see. Um, and then on the on the uh, other side of the coin for the sell side. Many of these technology companies are not really profitable or have uh, price to sales ratios uh, over one, um, so that are not you know basically quite quite a bit over one. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, so we're going to look at two of the most popular ETFs: uh, one in healthcare and one in energy, just to give us a better idea uh, for what's been going on. So you can see it's not quite a buy yet signal, uh, at least according to the MACD. In the healthcare industry in general, we're still kind of dropping here. Uh, we've been actually increasing the drop. Um, so that's kind of a bad sign. Um, you can see on the volume side, we've actually been going negative volume and even more negative volume recently. Um, and the money flow is generally looking a little bit on the negative side uh, for healthcare. So on the energy sector, things look a little bit different. This is the XLE uh, ETF. Um, but in general, what's what's going on here is that you see that the MACD just crossed, so it's actually looking on the sell side, um, potentially, uh, but still kind of on the positive territory, um, at least for the last week. And you see here uh, for finance sector uh, on XLF, actually getting into kind of a sell territory as well. Um, so anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this uh, discussion of what's going on in the markets. Um, we looked primarily at technology, uh, healthcare, um, finance, and energy. Uh, but there's a lot of different sections of the economy. Um, you can see this is the full chart here for what happened this past week. Um, you know, definitely there was uh, some good moves and some bad moves. Um, and I would say definitely on the downward side this past week, which isn't so great. Um, looking at Apple down 8% is quite a major uh, feat for the market to overcome. There are a variety of sectors uh, to invest in. Uh, don't just take my advice for it. Try to take a look at all these different factors and take a look at what you think is interesting. Anyway, I've had fun trying to help out and discuss this with you. Let me know if you got any questions. Be glad to talk with you about more details uh, outside of the chat or something like that. See you. Thank you so much.